is from uh, Going Raw with Huck. David Smoke, the NIL isn't the problem. University's not wanting to share the revenue with its partners. The players is the problem. NIL is a player's God-given right. You can't own them and make money off their names, image, and likeness. Play the blank game. Players. Freshmen should get 40 grand. He's just using these as figures. Sophomores, 50. Juniors, 65,000. Seniors, 85,000. Numbers are hypothetical. You get a one-time transfer to be eligible and play, but you have to sit out the second transfer. That's not even happening anymore. Yeah, I mean, that's and the thing. And receive only the minimum scholarship amount for the semester in which the games are played. That should be a good start. Okay, I got two things on here. For one, um, yeah, that's not – That's. I mean, I am agree with you on the second transfer part because there are guys – we've seen guys over the years that they just – they have no guidance or they don't listen to anybody and they just jump in and transfer left and right. I mean, there's, gosh, I saw somebody the other day. Um, gosh, who was it? He's got a, uh, a brother on one of the big 12 teams or something, I think. Um, and he's been at five schools in the last five years. I mean, that's just, that's ridiculous. I don't, I don't, I don't think there's any life scenario really where you're at five schools in five years. You know what I mean? Like that's just, that's hard to imagine that life just keeps you taking you those places. If you're not just basically searching out uh, money or playing time or something to, to move that much. But um, yeah, I mean the, the, the transfer thing, cool, but enforce it. They're not enforcing it. They're just giving waivers left and right. So that's eliminated. And then as far as you, the hypotheticals and I'm, and I'm mostly in agreement on this, but as far as the hypotheticals go or making them sit the second transfer year, why, why is there a cap? Just give it's the market, right? We can't like that's the thing is why why put in those rules? Well, and that goes to this one, Doctor Ivan Smith. And I tell you, I love these responses, and not all of them agree with us or me or whoever. David Small guardrails and salary cap are phrases that say I want restrictions on what players can make and where where they can play. Yet there are none of restrictions for the coaches, which is I want to get to this. This is old school, David. If Fox Sports were to offer you a million dollars more than you were making now, you would leave the show and your co-host in the dust. Is there a restrictive covenant Fox would buy out of the old co – coaches have buyouts. Yeah. Now, they they can leave, and Lincoln Riley left Oklahoma, and there are others who have left, and sometimes it has looked very slimy, and sometimes we don't know the story, but they're, they don't walk out the door without paying money. No. They're under contract. A national letter of intent is also a contract. Now, I understand there's reasons to leave. I'm not saying they shouldn't get paid. None of us have said that, but there has to be some sort of guardrails or you want to go old school? You ever heard of the Wild Wild West? That's what is happening right now with college football. I hope players can get whatever they can get, but there has to be some sort of guidance, some sort of guidelines, and even coaches who leave which is getting to be a lazy narrative. They can get up and leave. They have, they have guidelines and contracts, and they have to abide by that as well. Yeah, the coaches thing, every time somebody brings that up, they, bring, they start off with a really good point because coaches do have this freedom that players haven't seemingly had, and they do make a lot of money. But you're right. They have to pay money when they leave. Like, Isaiah Naor doesn't owe Wyoming anything because he had a great career there. But, you know, when he decides to up and leave and – Maybe he's not the perfect example because I'm so confused now on who's graduate transfers and who's actual. I have no idea. So just bear with me here. But if some guy decides to leave, you know, randomly, he doesn't owe anything. He just leaves. And then the school's left holding the bag and holding the empty roster spot and all that. And some may say, well, who cares? But again, that's, that's why it's not exactly like the coaches is the players don't bring back anything in return when they're out the door. Whereas a coach, at least you're getting $7 million towards the new coach you're going to have to go and hire now, or you're getting $10 million and you get to pay some of that to your new head coach and some of that to your staff that you're going to have to hire and do all that. But you lose a player, we well, just have to go find a new player. That, that If it was exactly like coaches, then a player leaves and that player's whatever figure is $4 million that then USC has to pay uh, pit for Jordan Addison or something would be the closest thing to what that's like. But then again, that gets into contracts for players and the business and uh, full-time employees and things like that. And that's why this is not just black and white. There's, there's effects to everything. And, and uh, you know, signing players to contracts like you do a coach, well, that would completely change. They wouldn't be just, you know, simple and straight line like that. And I'm not asking the players to sign a contract, but the national letter of intent has some sort of legal merit to it. I, maybe that's not the right phrase, but there has to be something. When you sign and then you get what you're supposed to get, what you want, then you just get walk up and leave. Um, Drew McCoy, 
just committed to Tennessee. Talking about Brew. the transfer. Brew. Uh, Brew, excuse me, uh, just tra- committed to Tennessee. He committed to USC, went and enrolled on campus in January of 2019. 17 days later, entered the transfer portal, the University of Texas. He then went from Texas back to USC. Missed several months of the 2019 seasons. He then made his debut with USC in 2020. 21 passes, two touchdowns, catches. He then was arrested for alleged domestic violence, suspended indefinitely, entered the transfer portal, and now he's at Tennessee. Now, the young man needs to grow up, and he knows that, and I and all of us do. But that's 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 an exception. But there are more stories like that. There's the domestic violence thing. That just seems to be a little bit much. Yeah, and here's why the coaches thing, Craig, is also not an apples to apples comparison. Okay, if I'm the head coach on a team and I'm there and I'm under contract and I'm not leaving and pay my buyout, I could lose 35 players. You don't lose 35 head coaches. No, you only lose one. Yeah, you can lose assistant coaches, yeah. but but and not to downgrade them, but like if your head coach is good, he can find good assistant coaches. I mean, that like there's there's lots of it's it's easier it's easier to find one head coach than it is all of a sudden to find 15 guys. Ask West Virginia. Ask Neil Brown how it's been the last couple of years trying to navigate replacing transfers. It's tough. Yeah, I just saw somebody mention that it was Timmy Allen's brother. Thank you. I was trying to figure out Timmy I, Allen, a former UT yeah, basketball yeah, yeah. player. Th- yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah, he has been at well, I think it's five schools in five years uh, is what he's on track or thank has you, Mike. accomplished. Yeah, thanks, Mike. I couldn't couldn't recall his name. Yeah, I mean, guys, it is what it is. Um, you know, uh, I I think we, we need to kind of like narrow down what we're even discussing well, exactly. Well, it, it, it's that they're meeting. We knew that yesterday. We brought it up and had a lot of discussion on it and trying to – some of the administrators and whatever are trying to throw a net around this and good luck with that. Uh, well, you know what I hate is that uh, yesterday we're talking to David Ubb and we're discussing all this and then, you know – He's talking about what, in theory, leaders could do to try and curb this. And the moment the NCAA came out, like f- like five minutes after the show ended yesterday or maybe sometime in the third hour, the moment they came out with that, I don't know if David Oven did exactly, but basically every coworker of his just immediately went, ha ha, they can't enforce that. And so it's like, so what's the point? And, and, and do the leaders of the NCAA, if this isn't something like whatever their grand plan is, if this is something just kind of like their last effort uh, is just going to get shot through immediately, like why waste the time? Why not come up with a decision that's not going to get shut down right away by the federal government? You know what I'm saying? Like the, there's like this whole name image likeness thing. Like they tried to fight it, but it was a losing fight from the very beginning. So they just went into court and wasted millions of dollars over many months to just lose a case everybody knew they were going to lose. So if in theory, the proposed ideas they've come up with are going to be shot through immediately, then what's the freaking point? Let's change the idea before we enforce it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Because here you had college football reporters saying, well, they need to do this and this and this. And they come out and say, hey, we're planning or rumors are we're going to do this. Ha, that's not going to work. That doesn't work. Okay, well, then maybe they should probably go back to the drawing board if we're just going to waste time like we did with the uh, NIL, uh, you know, lawsuit to begin with. Jalen Petrie is going to join us at 325. Here's another note from the Andy Staples article. Then we break. The second proposal also makes an abundance of sense, in his opinion. The transfer portal doesn't need to be open all year. For players to have freedom of movement. The coaches are proposing a few open windows. Kind of like in a national type recruiting for freshmen or whoever. Between the Sunday after the regular season finale and the December signing period, it's open. This would be extended to five days for any team who was in a bowl game. Mid-January until National Signing Day in February, it's open. Then between mid-April and May 1st, following spring drills, practices, whatever, when depth charts have firmed up, it's open. I saw a response to this last night, and I don't know who sent it because I was just passing through, saw it, and I I really loved it. But I saw someone mention, how does this vibe with uh, an academic calendar and the student part of this? And I just thought about it. I was like, wow, he's probably the only person that's actually thinking about the student in this entire thing. Because most people have just dismissed that and they just treat them like athletes, period. And there's no school even involved in any of this for most people when they, they discuss it. Like school is just not even a thing 
uh, classes don't exist or something. But that was a brilliant remark because it's like, oh, here's a guy who's actually based in reality and like just the, the bare bones of why these guys are at school to begin with. And yeah, I don't know how to answer that one. Clearly, academics were not a concern whatsoever. And I know some people say, well, they didn't go to class anyways. That's really not the case for a lot of them. There's a bunch of dudes with masters that just graduated from Baylor not too long ago that are now in the NFL. So it does matter to some people. Um, but yeah, I... I I think they got to do something. I don't know if that's the solution right there, but I, I think a year-round 24-7, 365 transfer portal is probably not the best way. Trimming that down, I would be okay with that, um, so long as it does match up to where you're not running into problems with guys being able to get to their other schools at, on certain time periods and things like that. But, um, you know, that's been debated for a while of some type of window, so... Um, you know, we'll see if that works uh, or if that ends up, you know, helping curb whatever the, you know, the problems are. Jalen Petrie 